Welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how to build your practice from startup to scale up, while being the kind of coach your clients crave. Finally, a podcast for financial coaches. Here are your hosts, Maria Casillas and Cody Sizemore. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Financial Coaches Podcast. I'm your co-host, Maria Casillas, and I'm joined excitedly by Cody Sizemore, my incredible co-host. Cody, I'm so glad to have you here today. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing good, great. good. Happy to hear it. Um, so today, I think it would be really great to do some follow-up from last week. But before we do that, just want to say thank you to everyone who tunes in today, last week, next week. We're so excited to have you every time you're here. Uh, those of you who are every weekers, we say a special thank you to you. We want to encourage each and every one of you to join us in our Facebook group, the Financial Coaches Community by New Money Habits. We look forward to seeing you there. Let's jump in. Cody, last week we talked about money back guarantees and, and kind of what that looks like and how like we stepped into the, the mindset or the position of the consumer and how their minds are going a mile a minute. Like, am I going to get some of this money back? What's the risk? All of that stuff. And I got to thinking after that conversation that another thing I think people really start to think about is, all right. I'm convinced that I want to hire this guy, but I don't have the money. <laughs> like he, he wants, you know, $4,000 and I'm just throwing a number out there. I don't know what your actual number is, but he wants $4,000 and I don't have that right now. How in the heck am I supposed to justify paying that when I don't have it, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'd like to talk with you about Cody today is some ideas about how we might be able to get creative with our potential prospects who are saying, I really do want to hire you, but I don't know how to do that. Is there a way to be kind of creative with how we structure our fees for them? There absolutely is. Um, and I would even say that it's not even just that, you know, people have the the hard time of being able to figure out how to invest. That's definitely mm -hmm. part of it. But I also think that there's certain people who even after you go through your whole, you know, investment structure to you say like, you know, if you want to do monthly, it'll look like this. If you want to do in full, it'll look like this. I do offer the money back guarantee, stuff like that. Even after all of that, they, they see the value. They know that's going to be helpful, but it's still scary for them. Yeah. It's still scary. Right. And they're just like nervous about taking that step, even if you offer the guarantee um, to where maybe they have that four to five grand in the savings account. But, the, you know, maybe they have uh, like, I don't know, seven thousand in a savings account, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, if I do this, it would go down to three thousand or two thousand. And that just makes me feel really scared and like all those kinds of stuff. Right. That that's another scenario that I've also seen and ran into myself as well. So, mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, yes, there's definitely ways to be creative with it um, to, you know, it doesn't have to be just black and white so that you can, you know, enroll a new client, but also help another person as well. Mm -hmm. And before you go down some of those creative rabbit holes, I just want to share that I don't know that it's always the large amount. Now, granted, I'm the one who brought that up, but I don't know that it's always the large investment that keeps people scared. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, and we've talked on this show before about how I've been doing this for a long time. And when I started, I had very little belief in my ability and I literally charged a hundred dollars for, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. a program that was like eight weeks long and included a $25 book. Okay. So you can imagine how basically free this was for people. And yet there was fear around commitment to that. And mm -hmm. I think oftentimes that fear really is more around the idea that there's going to be change involved. You know, we don't really like that idea. So um, I just want to throw that out there only because someone who's listening today going, okay, this does not, it's not relevant for me right now. I'm not charging $4,000. My people don't need to hear this. You still need to hear this because it doesn't matter what amount you're charging, they're going to go through this process in their minds. And so let's talk about how to creatively structure our fees for our, our clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think that building off what you just said, not even just change can be fearful for people, but also maybe even commitment can yeah. be fearful. Mm -hmm. You know, so for example, like if you offer a six month program, there might be someone who goes, well, six months is a long time. I don't know Great if point. I want to be doing this for six months. Um, 
you know, maybe if it was one or two months kind of <laughs> thing. Um, so that's another thing too, is just the fear of the commitment of Excellent it point. as well. Right. So, um, but yeah, you know, I've had a few instances where I've had to get creative and let me first preface this with saying this. I'm a big fan of only working with people who are really, really wanting it, really wanting it. So I don't get creative with every person who initially tells me no, Mm -hmm. right? It's really just those individuals that you can tell that they really want it, but they're just having a hard time with it. But I also connect with them really well. I also see the potential in them that maybe they're not seeing in themselves very clearly. It's those people that I'm like, I don't want this stupid thing of this stupid investment to be the thing that keeps you away from finally living the life that you want to live. So Mm -hmm. I can work with you. That's when I would say it makes sense to be creative, not just for every Joe Schmo that walks down the street. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Okay, great. So a couple things that I have done, I'd be, I'd be interested to hear what you've done too, but I'll just outline a couple of things I've done. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. One would be with the, uh, the, the idea of like, well, how do I even get started to pay you kind of thing? Because mm-hmm. I just don't have any money right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and another one would be maybe they have some money, but they're a little bit nervous about you know, doing the in full investment, even though they're saving a thousand dollars by doing that, because it will, it will, you know, take their savings account and it will lower it. Kind of thing. Right. So I'll start with that one first. Okay. Um, one thing that I've done is I've told people, I'm like, listen, so f- for example, I have a client right now that I'm working with and they enrolled into my, my, uh, largest coaching package, which if you do the monthly, Um, At the end of the six months, it basically comes out to five grand. And if you do the in full at the end of the six months, it comes out to four grand kind of thing. So, you know, there's a big savings there if you were Mm -hmm. to do the in full. And they had the money for the in full, but they were nervous about it. Right. Um, And I told them, I was like, listen, what if we did something like this? What if we did the first month to where we're only doing a thousand down? So not four, just a thousand. So yes, your savings account will go down a little bit, but there's really not a big difference between ten thousand and nine thousand dollars. Like, you know, just just being real, like an eight thousand dollar problem can be covered by a nine thousand dollar savings account. And mm-hmm. it can also be covered by a ten thousand dollar savings account, right? So mm-hmm. it's not a huge difference there. But what if we did a thousand down for the first month? And if after that first month you decide, hey, this this isn't something that's really like worth it. I haven't gotten value from it. I don't want to keep going. Then no problem. You won't be on the hook for the rest of the investment. Now, pay attention to how I'm phrasing that. Mm -hmm. I heard it. With with being creative here, Mm -hmm. I'm taking the guarantee off the table for that Mm -hmm. first month. Mm -hmm. So you won't be responsible for the rest of the investment. So that's almost like a 30 day termination guarantee Mm -hmm. in a way to where it's like, you're just not on the hook for the rest. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you choose to continue beyond that first month, then we can get the, uh, the balance taken care of, and then we can keep going. And, you know, if after that six months, you then look back and you say, Hey, it really wasn't worth it. Because after the first month, it was pretty good, but I was really just curious as to how good it could get, and it didn't really get there. Then I'll give you the guarantee, knowing that mm-hmm. no one has gotten the guarantee because they yeah. don't want it, because it's really worth it, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm being creative there in a sense of like, let's get something to get you started, to get your foundation in place, to allow you to see what the potential could be. Mm-hmm. And then if after that, you don't want to do it, no problem. I'm still getting paid for my time. You're not on the hook for everything. But if you do want to do it, which is probably going to be the case, we can continue. I'll get the rest of the investment. You'll get the rest of the value. Everyone's happy. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit pause for a second and ask you, when you say the rest of the investment, are you still honoring the paid in full number for them? I would be. 
Yes. Okay. I just want yes. to clarify that so those who are listening can can hear that as well. Yeah, and that's one thing that I make sure is clear to them too. Cause okay. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to honor this, you know, like I'm not going to mm-hmm. like bait and switch you here. Like I'm going to honor it. Um, but we're just being creative. And the reason I'm being creative is just simply because I know you want this and I see the potential in you. And I don't want this silly thing to stand in the way of your best life mm-hmm. kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. that's one way that I've gotten creative. And, um, I've done that a handful of times and, uh, every time that I've done it, they've continued with the, with the rest of the program. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. sometimes just about getting that little bit of a nudge kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. In regards to the people who say that they can't pay because they don't have any money. What I would do in those regards is maybe be a little bit creative in certain ways. So number one would be, okay, well, what can you do today as like a initial deposit of good faith, right? Just to make it real. You know, it mm-hmm. could be 50% of the first month. It could be 25% of the first month. It could be 10% of the first month. I don't care. I just want to make this a little bit real, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Let's get something started. And then, you know, the next time you get paid, maybe we'll get a little bit more. The next time you get paid from there, we'll get like the first month taken care of, and then we'll get started kind of thing. That's one mm-hmm. thing that we could do. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I've done though, too, is if they give me like a larger portion of that deposit of good faith, let's say 50% or more, um, I would get started with them. I would get started with them. And I would say, okay, great. Like, we'll, we'll do this as like a getting started kind of thing. And then we'll get the, the other half of the first month taken care of over the next couple of weeks. And then we'll be in a good flow from there. Um, and you'll be in a good flow simply because with the coaching, we're going to get those, those systems and structures in place to where it's not going to be an issue kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's worked really well for people too, you know? So those are the couple scenarios on my end that I've done to be creative to mm-hmm. just get people started so that they can actually start seeing the results and, and you actually, you know, enroll a new client as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I've done a couple things as well. A couple of them are, I've done a few things, but a couple of them are very similar to what you've discussed. So it doesn't make sense to repeat those. Um, mm-hmm. The one that I think I would like to add to it is I've had clients in the past who are either they're in a position that is going to change soon. So maybe they have a certain amount of income right now and it's small, but they're anticipating an increase in their income coming up. Mm-hmm. And so we've been very creative in terms of, okay, we're willing to do the monthly one because they don't have the full amount right now, but they have opted in for the monthly uh, approach. And so maybe we start doing a smaller monthly amount in the first two months or first month or first three months, however it's going to work for them and then either slowly build it up or be able to ratchet that up really quickly when they get that new income as an example. And Mm -hmm. so that's another way that we've been able to do that so that by the end of the program, if it's a program based, we also with new many habits have some monthly stuff as well. Uh, But by the end of that program, they've either paid the same amount or their monthly fee has ended up averaging out where it's a win win for us all. Uh, But they didn't have to wait those extra three months to get started. Because I think that's one of the other things too, is that if somebody knows they have the ability coming, but they would have to wait, it's like, that's three wasted months that they'll never get back. And we Mm -hmm. might as well start laying the foundation for them now. So that I think is the one that I'd like to add to the list of ways that we can be creative. Yeah, I think that's really important, not only for getting started sooner in the sense of like, you know, helping them, because like you Mm -hmm. said, it's, it's three months wasted kind of thing. And a lot can happen in three months if you're, you know, sure. crossing your eyes and, or no, <laughs> crossing your T's and dotting your eyes. Right? I mean, a lot can happen uh, if you're crossing your eyes too. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot can happen in three months for you. Right. So sure. like, that's the benefit for the, for the client, but also a lot can happen in three months to where if you basically like close that door or they take, you know, they go away from it, the likelihood of them actually coming back and enrolling in three months is really, really, really low. Yeah. Really low. So sometimes it's just about, you know, salvaging that kind of thing and and having it become real um, Mm -hmm. to where the creativeness can come into play too. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Cody, I think that's a really good point that you just made. And I want to go back if I may to something that you said, even before I brought in the extra example that I wanted to share. And that is the idea of them making it real. 
that whole thing, uh, like you mentioned just a couple seconds ago about having salvage them, you know, I mm-hmm. know it sounds kind of like we are trying to just keep the a sale, sale not yeah. lose them, that kind of thing. And it sounds a little bit bad. Um, but you know, as well as I do, that we're very much about serving the client here. And so yes. I want to make sure that our listeners understand that when we talk about serving the client and we talk about salvaging, there is really more to this. So what I want to go back to for a second, if I may, is that whole thing that you said about making it real. I think that's how you put it, where mm-hmm. you were talking about, hey, if you've got, you know, let's just get the thousand dollars now so that we can quote unquote make it real for us. When I first heard you say that, my mind was thinking, okay, we're making it real for us, the coach. You know, we're, we're making sure that we quote unquote salvage that. But as you started talking more and I started thinking a little bit more about what we're really doing here and just kind of really looking at the psychology side of stuff, we're making it real for them. Like we're giving them an opportunity to say yes to themselves. Exactly. And I think oftentimes that is so missed and people think that, you know, if they don't have all the money, they're not going to say yes to themselves. We want them to have that opportunity again, to say yes to themselves, to say yes to this, this potential shift in their life. That's going to be life changing for them. And so our creativity is going to allow for that. And I want you to hear that so that you know, this is not just about us. It doesn't mean that it doesn't serve us, but it's not just about us. It really is about serving them well. Yeah. And I, and I want to double down with what you just said, because that is 100% what I was uh, trying to say um, initially, right? Because yeah, the thing that I've found is that even if you give someone like a couple days or a couple weeks or a month or whatever it might be to think about it or to, you know, try things out, whatever it might be. Um, oftentimes I would say probably like 80 to 85%. They usually don't come back. They don't move forward with coaching. And with that, they're going to continue to deal with some of the same things that they have been dealing with. You know, like they're going to continue to struggle with the money. They're going to get, you know, they're going to continue to have that relationship with money that maybe isn't serving them. Yeah. Um, they're going to continue to have the, you know, the spending habits, um, the mindsets behind things, and it's just not serving them. Right. Yeah. So, so with that, like making it real comment, what that mm-hmm. really means is like, Hey, let's make it real for you so that you can like s- get started here to, actually make a difference because if we don't that's fine like i want to give you some space like i want to respect you but i found like it does it is a kind of a disservice to them because oftentimes those fear-based emotions start to kick in what if i can't do it what if it doesn't work what if you know what if what if what if and that's not good for them because then they just stay stuck where they are and not where they want to be Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the and that's the whole like making it real side of things. Yeah. Where it's yeah. a very much a service based thing versus yeah. a personal gain. Okay. And coming from you, I absolutely believe that. And so I just I wanted to point it out because I know sometimes our minds just go in a different direction. I also want to say that it's not just that sometimes they stay where they are and they stay stuck. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes they just make it worse for themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you give somebody three months of continuing down the path that they're continuing, sometimes making it worse, Mm -hmm. it's going to be that much harder for them to say yes to themselves three months later. So it's no different than somebody knowing that they're going to be fasting in about a week that all of a sudden they binge for two weeks prior to. It's just, we know, oh, let's get it all out of our system. You know, let's go Mm -hmm. buy those cars. Let's go buy the things that we want because Cody's going to tell us we're not allowed to buy anything anymore. That's what they're thinking in their minds. Um, And so they end up making it worse for themselves and then they don't come to you anyway. And now they're even worse off. So it Mm -hmm. really is a good way to serve them. And I'm really glad that you were able to, Mm -hmm. we were able to um, make that clear today. So yeah, definitely. Cool. cool. Good conversation. Yeah, Good conversation. I agree. So, uh, yeah, you know, if, if you guys are listening to this and you are thinking about maybe, maybe even a couple times in the past where you've, you know, you could have done this, but you didn't, um, that's okay. First and foremost, but maybe just keep it as like a, like something in your back pocket for the next person that you talk to. Um, again, this is something that you have to use some, uh, some discernment with, you know, sure. like you, I wouldn't be just doing this for every single person. It really has to be the right person that you, that you have a good connection with that you see the potential in um, that just needs a little bit of an extra 
extra loving on, you know? Um, and it, I found that that can really, really benefit not just you, but also more importantly, the client. So, um, well said. yeah. So with that being said, thank you guys for listening to another episode of the financial coaches podcast and, uh, we'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to the financial coaches podcast brought to you by new money habits and Sizemore financial coaching. Submit your questions to our hosts by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes and join our growing group of like-minded coaches on Facebook. And until next time, happy coaching. Music provided by Summer School.